record button. But they Let's they brought there. that up to me when I was just sitting there just dicking around doing whatever it is I do. So they're like, yeah, yeah. Duck, that's actually mad entertaining. Like you make this that's shit fun bet. to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how good my commentator skills are, but uh, fuck it. We'll, we'll just see. be having a conversation, man. That's it. And then talking about the game. Yeah, true. I literally uh, got this guy lining up under center. I'm going to see what he's going to do right here. Just little shit like that, setting up the plays. But we both know football enough that we could get around. Or there could just be some fucking oh, yeah. silence for a minute. And that could be funny, too. Yeah. Oh, shit. We're supposed <laughs> to be commentating. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. You ready? Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> there it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Let's fucking get it. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Football Busters Podcast. My man Will over there waving hi. My name's Eric. Uh, we're recording this on Tuesday, November fifteenth. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a good weekly recap for you after Week Ten. But uh, let me toss to Will real quick. How you doing today, man? Bro, I'm feeling great, man. Another great day. Another great weekend of football. Just a lot of stuff to talk about. So I'm excited to get into this too. Heck yeah. Uh, we'll try to we'll try to keep it a little bit condensed. I know last week we ran over an hour. <laughs> we'll try to we'll try to keep that a little bit shorter this time mm-hmm. for y'all. But let's start with the Thursday night game: Panthers versus Falcons. This one was pretty ugly. Uh, tough weather conditions as well. Um, uh, I don't have a ton to say to set this one up, but what were your biggest takeaways from this one? Yeah, the Panthers are winning games now that they've made their team worse, so that's always cool to see. <laughs> um, yeah. Carolina absolutely dominated on the ground now that they gotten rid of Christian McCaffrey. Uh, they gave Deonta Foreman 31 carries, and he turned that into 130 yards and a touchdown. Uh, yeah. Passing volume for this team has been really low as of late, but it's worth noting that Terrace Marshall, who I just learned doesn't have an N in his name, Saw the same amount of snaps and routes run as DJ Moore. And then PJ, uh, you know, Phillip, he hurt his ankle in this one. So Baker's going to get the start next week. Sam Darnold's going to be backing him up. So a little bit of a passing shaking, passing of the torch, uh, changing of the guard, I guess, really is what that is. And then for Atlanta, uh, Atlanta, on the other hand, couldn't get shit going on the ground. And unfortunately for them, Marcus Mariota's just really fucking bad. So they never really had a chance in this one at all. Uh, Drake London and Kyle Pitts once again led the team with seven targets, so that's encouraging to see. London was able to actually find the end zone and salvage his fantasy day, but Kyle Pitts only ended with two catches for 28 yards. I'm pretty sure out of the seven targets, uh, six of these were uncatchable, so the fact that he got two catches was kind of tough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kyle Pitts also saw over 200 air yards in this game, which is incredible for a tight end, but you know, Marcus Mariota just keeps fucking missing him. Like I said, he's just really fucking bad, so... Yeah, they literally it's crazy because yeah. they literally brought in Marcus Mariota to just be a stopgap sort of a bridge. And he's done nothing but that. Really, it's impressive. Yeah, he, he's been total crap. Um, and it sounds like they're not bringing in Desmond Ritter anytime soon. He, he's he been uh, Arthur Smith has been asked about him a couple times. He's not entertaining the idea yet. Um, yeah, Kyle Pitts with over 200 air yards in this one and only finishing with 28 yards. That's uh, so so disappointing hey but um, we've seen it before <laughs> we've, just seen it. we've seen it a lot <laughs> yeah you when you said calipus and drake lennon led the team with seven targets that's encouraging i feel like we say that every fucking week it doesn't make a difference <laughs> yeah, at least they're looking at them <laughs> at least they're looking at them but let's move on to the next one uh this one was over in germany first nfl game in germany which was pretty cool the bucks take on the seahawks and win 21 to 16 uh, looks like the Rashad White takeover is starting to happen. You love to see it. Uh, what are your biggest takeaways from this one? You already know what my biggest takeaway is. Tom Brady, 2-0 since the divorce. Let's talk about it. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, in more serious news, Rashad White getting a huge amount of usage in this backfield. It's looking like the Rashad White takeover has finally begun. Uh, Leonard Fournette did hurt his hip in the third quarter. So, you know, Rashad White's numbers are slightly inflated. Uh, finishing, you know, uh, 22 rushes for 105 yards. But seeing the fact that like he was getting more work before Lenny even left the game, not the best news for uh, Lenny out there, you know. And especially since yeah. they're going into a bye week soon, this gap between their usage could get even bigger as we go forward in the season. So something to keep an eye on. Not the most encouraging for Leonard Fournette, but Rashad White owners, you may be getting a, a good running back pretty soon because he was looking really good yes, out sir. there. Uh, Chris Goblin finally scored a touchdown. He went a uh, six Let's for go. seventy-one in the tug. 
And then Julio Jones actually found a, got a touchdown. He scored the first touchdown of this game, I believe. Yeah. 31 yep. yard touchdown. I wasn't expecting it. it wasn't on my bingo board for the day. <laughs> But that's awesome to see the Julio Jones out there producing as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Kate Otten's snap share and routes run were significantly reduced this game because Cameron Brait was back in the lineup. Also with Julio Jones sort of back, it may have also hurt that as well. But um, we also just kind of have to mention the fact that <laughs> Leonard Fournette <laughs> threw an interception on a play that was designed to go to Tom Brady that was hilariously bad. And it's like... I don't think I've ever seen a play where a pass was going to Tom Brady and it was successful. I don't think we've seen yeah. it yet. And we've yeah, seen multiple so. attempts, but I don't think he's ever this actually one, come down with one. This one was especially funny because they ran a play where Leonard Fournette was, you know, in Wildcat, the quarterback, and Tom Brady was out wide earlier in the game. And nobody covered Tom Brady. Literally just left him out there by himself <laughs> so that you know Tom Brady came back to the sideline and was like, yeah, we need to run that shit. Throw it to me. <laughs> Tariq Woolen said, nah, bro, I got this and picked him off like it was nothing. It's just, <laughs> in any situation where your play design is throw it to the 45-year-old, you should probably come no. up with a different play. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then moving on to the Seattle side, they struggled a lot offensively up until like the end of this game, really. They didn't get a whole lot going yeah. until the fourth quarter. Uh, Kenneth Walker couldn't really break free on the ground going 10 for 17, but he was featured a lot in the passing game catching six passes for uh, 55 yards. I believe this is the first time that he got all of the receiving work out of the backfield. I don't think Travis Homer really got any out of there. So super encouraging for Kenneth Walker owners out there. (laughs) For sure. Then uh, DK Metcalf leading the receiving core going six for 71. Uh, However, Lockett and Goodman were the two that actually came out with touchdowns in this game. So DK Metcalf not able to see pay dirt, but still leading the team, still the alpha receiver, just – couldn't find the end zone this game. Hopefully that changes next week. But yeah, that's all we really got from this game right here. Uh, Geno yeah, Smith still much... exceeding expectations as well. True. Uh, my most True. improved player of the year, if I were to vote, honestly. he's. I don't think there's anybody else that could compare, honestly. Yeah, most improved or comeback player of the year, whichever one you want to give to him, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, only other thing that I want to say is if there's anybody out there or if there's any – owners in your leagues of Kenneth Walker that are panicking go buy his ass like right now. this is this is the window it's probably not going to happen i doubt people are panicking but potentially i saw a uh, quote so let's I, move on don't the the Seahawks are coming up on buy soon aren't they like next week their buy is this week yeah i think i saw a quote that i don't remember who said it if i can find it i'll link them in the description but it was just like the only thing that uh turns me off from Kenneth Walker is the fact they have a buy next week that's it facts so yeah definitely Did you? Did you freeze just now? Back from technical difficulties. Sorry about that. We'll move on to the next matchup, Lions versus Bears. This was a high-scoring affair, really exciting one. Uh, Justin Fields continues to light it up, but I want to hear what you got to say from this game. Dude, like I said in our uh, injury news and sort of football news, you guys should check that video out if you haven't already. But the Bears... Super exciting team to watch right now. The only yes. thing is they just can't come away with wins, but they have been really fun to watch. Which kind of good for them, in my opinion. Yeah. Like it sucks for the players that they're losing games, but clearly they have their franchise quarterback and they're securing a better draft pick. Let's fucking go, Bears. Honestly, bro. So just to get into it, uh for Detroit, the Sun God, he came to play. Uh 12 Hell targets, yeah. 10 receptions for 119 yards. However, Unfortunately, he may have tweaked his previous high ankle sprain, so got to monitor his practice status throughout the week to see if he's going to be back. It's not the best news in the world that he retweaked his ankle sprain, so hopefully it's nothing too serious and it's not you know, more severe now, but we're hoping for the best. Just going to keep an eye on that situation. Uh, DeAndre Swift's usage is just confusing. Uh, 19 snaps, 7 touches, but he scored a touchdown. Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw something where he was saying he was kind of pissed off about his usage as well, so... I don't know what the team is kind of doing. I think they're trying to keep him healthy, but at the same time, you know, if he's ready to go, let the guy play, you know, let him play. Let's see what he can do. You're not even really testing him at this point anymore. But then also Jamal Williams, uh, 16 carries and 59 yards in the touchdown has not really been the picture of efficiency out the backfield, but still getting a lot of usage. So Jamal Williams has still been a pretty decent, at least fantasy flex option, as we've kind of talked about in prior weeks. And on the Chicago side of the ball, we got Justin Fields with another 40 bomb. 
170, 167 passing yards and two passing touchdowns and 147 rushing yards and two rushing yeah. touchdowns on the ground, bro. Like Ballin. He's, he's doing it all. Even and I just I Justin Fields is so electric. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah. I don't I don't know what the, what happened or how the switch was flipped or if they changed any type of the way that they were running the team or not, but the switch has been flipped and Justin Fields is starting to look like, you know, that Lamar Jackson breakout year type thing where he could win you a league. So it's awesome yeah. to see him out there performing finally and just to see him see some success because I was getting nervous for a second. And then <clears throat> Cole Komet led all receivers in snaps and targets. He finished with four catches for 72, 74 yards and two touchdowns. He also went down with an injury, so that's something to keep an eye on throughout the week. However, the team is optimistic that he will be back sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really do think that Justin Fields is going to be a league winner for teams going down the stretch. Mm-hmm. It's so fun to watch. Like you said, I got him on my dynasty team, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, and then as far as DeAndre Swift, man, like you said, if he's not healthy, sit him. Let him get healthy. If he is healthy, why aren't you playing him? This doesn't really make sense to me the way they're using him. Yeah, because it's literally it's been three weeks at this point. They've done this three weeks in a row. You can't you can't test somebody for three weeks. It's You test yeah. him one and see if he's ready. If he's not, sit him. It's point blank. Right. Yeah. So that situation is weird, but let's move on to the next matchup. The Dolphins versus the Browns. Dolphins took it to Cleveland in this one, 39 to 17. Tua keeps doing his thing. Um, yeah. What were your biggest takeaways? Uh, so just for the Miami side of the ball, Tua, he's just been balling. They've been drawing everything up correctly for him. He's got 285 yards through the air and three passing touchdowns. I officially can't talk shit about the guy right now. It's just, <laughs> it is what it is. Tua's doing his thing, and the Dolphins are succeeding because of it. Uh, Jeff Wilson has taken over this backfield from Raheem Mostert completely, as we kind of saw. It was kind of trending in that we way. We called that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he got 17 carries for 119 yards and a touchdown. Also caught two passes for 24 yards to the air. So, Jeff Wilson, extremely involved in this offense. And then Trent Sherfield and Alec Ingle caught touchdown passes in this one. So Waddle and uh, Tyreek Hill didn't have huge days, but still had pretty good days. They're still the guys that are go-to. It's just they didn't catch the touchdowns at the end of the day. So I think Hill did catch one. It was just his yardage was down from what it had been the past couple weeks. That is correct. God yeah. damn it. You're right. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. No, you're 100% right, though. <laughs> and then on the Cleveland side of the ball, Nick Chubb. What is this note that you have here, Eric? What is that? Oh, just ho hum, you know, just run of the mill, average Nick Chubb day. It's not great, but he's still putting up numbers 11 for 63 and one touchdown. That's all. Okay. Yeah. So Nick Chubb doing Nick Chubb things. <laughs> ho hum. <Yeah. laughs> and someone who kind of emerged that we weren't really expecting, someone that we've kind of not really, no, nah, we have. We talked a lot of shit about this guy kind of throughout the season. Yeah. But uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones was the clear wide receiver one in this game. He outsnapped Amari Cooper, out-targeted him as well, 9-3, to three, caught five of them for 99 yards. Do you think this is going to be more of a trend going forward, especially like with, Sean, with Deshaun Watson coming back? Do we? This, it's a weird situation. So Donovan Peoples-Jones, we have been talking shit. I'll, that's, that's true, and it's something that we should acknowledge. But uh, like last week and the week before, we did see his usage, usage start to increase. Um, and we didn't really do like a, a standalone waiver wire video, but he was somebody that I was targeting um, and somebody that I'm going to continue to target on waiver wires if he's still available. Um, but as far as his split with Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper's splits are the craziest I've seen of any player maybe in NFL history as far as like home and away splits and then like dome versus outside splits. He's terrible away from home for some reason. Uh, it, it was it was that way in Dallas. It was that way all the way back when he was playing for the Raiders. Um, so I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't seem like it should be a trend, but it is. Uh, and so I think that's why Donovan Peoples-Jones kind of stepped up. Okay. I guess that does make some sense. That is weird. It's really strange. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, this just sort of a run-of-the-mill game. This game kind of went how I expected it to, honestly. Yeah. Brown's defense has been struggling, so the Dolphins put up a ton of points. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to a much less fun matchup. This one was really, really ugly. Uh, the Titans versus the Broncos. Titans win 17-10. to 10. Ryan Tannehill comes back, unfortunately, for Will. Uh, he doesn't look good, but he definitely looks better than Malik Willis. <laughs> what do you got to say? Yeah, so I've given up on the Malik Willis train. I did. <laughs> yeah, it was fun while it was. I got him on uh, Madden, you know, in, fan, in a oh, franchise. Yeah. He's pretty good in that, but not in real yeah. life. 
And it's still fuck Ryan Tannehill, but like you said, he did look a lot better, and he's back. Uh, Denver was able to hold King Henry to a very pedestrian day for him. 19 carries, 53 yards, and no touchdowns. Uh, Nick Westbrook, how do you pronounce this? Ikine? Is Ikine. Ikine? Yeah, Ikine? I think so. So had one of the least important but great fantasy <laughs> performances this season, going five for 119 and two touchdowns, because who started him? zero people <laughs> yeah if you started him i want you to drop a picture of your roster with the score i need Please. to see that i need yes. to see that because yes. you i might need to come to you i might need to ask you for fantasy football advice honestly because that's fucking nuts uh, there's probably some tanking dynasty rosters out there that started him just for shits and giggles true. I, would, I would imagine that's true that's true you started him on a real team but <laughs> <laughs> It's also worth mentioning that Traylon Burks played and got six targets in his first game back, so he's immediately slotted back into that you know wide receiver one role in this offense. So that is yep. extremely encouraging to see. And then for Denver, as we talked about in our injury news and recap, then uh, they're just this offense is really fucking bad, dude. They're really bad. So bad. And it was Cortland Sutton and no one else. He saw ten targets, which he turned into six catches for sixty six yards. Oh, six six six. Something that we had talked about. <laughs> that Cortland Sutton's usage, his production had to catch up at some point, we felt like, to his usage. I still feel like it hasn't really, but it's at least on the track of getting there. But it is at least good to see that he had six catches for 66 yards. Wasn't able to find the end zone, but this is the most encouraging game we've seen from Cortland Sutton in a while. Yeah, if this Broncos team continues to only put up 10 points, doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> like, even if the usage is great, it's it's not going to turn into fantasy goodness for him. So that's unfortunate. Uh, we mentioned it in our uh, our video that we just recorded, the injury and recap. So if you didn't see that, go check it out. But a fun stat about this Broncos team is that their defense is actually incredible, probably the best in the league. But their offense is so – like, I, I just feel so bad for the defense because the, the stat is if the offense has scored 18 points in every game this season, they would be 8-1. and one, But they're 3-6. and six. <laughs> like, what are we doing, Denver? What are we doing? They're just not putting points on the board. They're very limited. Very limited. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Limited. I love that shit. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> on to definitely the best game of the week, probably the game of the year so far, the Vikings versus the Bills. The Vikings edge out the Bills 33-30. to 30. Uh, Justin Jefferson nominates himself for catch of the year in this one. Oh, yeah. uh, Josh Allen plays through the elbow sprain and still looks, you know, pretty much like himself. What were your biggest takeaways here? No, it's just LSU receivers, man, coming out here and just stunting with these mm. catches. It's yeah. that catch was one of the best I think I've ever seen. Like it was, that was pretty crazy. The fact that he was able yeah. to land the way he did and still hold it fucking nuts. But, you know, Justin Jefferson for MVP had a monster game, yeah. 10 catches, 193 yards, and a touchdown. It was at a certain point where you're watching this game, and you're like, yeah, so it's third and 10. Where's Justin Jefferson at on the field? Because he's who they oh, got to yeah. go to here, and he made a play every single time. So yeah, hats off to him. Uh, Dalvin Cook once again saving his week with an 81-yard <laughs> touchdown run. Ended with yeah. a fantasy line of 14 carries for 119 yards and a touchdown. If he didn't have that 81-yard touchdown – not a great week, but that's also – It's hard to argue when yeah, he just to say. keeps doing it because he is that good. That's why I said it's kind of – I was going to say it's an asinine argument because if he repeats yeah. doing that, is he really saving his days or is he just Dalvin Cook? So Right, yeah. And then even though it didn't really look like a good game for fantasy purposes, you know, Kirk played really well from a football perspective. You know, he kept his composure. They were down in this game. They were able to come back and then win in overtime. It was just – it's what you want to see out of your quarterback. So as much as I like yeah. to talk shit about Kirk, hats off to him. He was able to pull this off against a really good team. So Vikings are starting to look like contenders. Uh, going on to the side of the ball for Buffalo, Josh Allen played through his elbow sprain and looked pretty much like himself. Still threw the ball 43 times. He threw two pretty bad interceptions, but he's kind of been doing that lately regardless of the injury. So not really much to say there. We hope that his pain management wasn't crazy throughout this game and he's going to be good going forward. But, the fact that he went out there and still played and made it through overtime and he's yeah he's still Josh Allen at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. Devin Singletary was not really efficient but was able to score twice so still had a pretty good fantasy day and oh had a great fantasy day honestly had a really good fantasy day. Yeah. Uh, and then Stephon Diggs saw 15 targets which turned into 12 receptions for 128 yards. Gabe Davis led the team in snaps and caught six passes for 93 yards and a touchdown so. 
Good things coming from the receivers over there in Buffalo, too, as we sort of know. They got Josh Allen, at quarterback. So seeing Gabe Davis go out there and be productive, it's good to see. I'm not confident it'll happen every single week, but it is something that we know is a possibility for Gabe Davis. So it is good to see that they're going out there doing what they need to do. For sure. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add to that one, so we'll move on to our next matchup between the Giants and the Texans. The Giants win this one 24-16 in a game that ended up being closer than it really was. Uh, The Giants dominated this one. It was Saquon Barkley's game the whole way. Um, Yeah, it was was ground and pound for both teams, really, and that was about it. But what did you see in this one? Yeah, this like you said, it was ground and pound. This was all Saquon Barkley. And I think if you guys go back to last week's video, Eric literally said this is going to be a Saquon (laughs) Barkley game. And it was 35 carries for 152 yards in the touchdown. I I don't think that there's much uh, much glory in calling that this was going to be a Saquon Barkley game. The the reason that I'm kind of happy with the call is because it was from a sit start decision, including Daniel Jones, and like this Houston defense has been bad against the ground game and the pass, and so I just didn't think that Daniel Jones was going to be great because I didn't think they were going to throw the ball, and that turned out to be true. He only passed it I think 17 times. Hey, man, it's just it's two different sides of the same coin, man. I'm going to give you your flowers. <laughs> and then Appreciate Darius, you. Yeah. And then Darius Slayton led the team in snaps and targets, uh, going three for 95 in the touchdown. So it's cool to see. And on the Houston side of the ball, Damian Pierce, as we've said before, the game script does not matter. Damian Pierce is going to get his, and he did. 17 carries for 94 on the ground, two catches for 28 yards through the air. He's just always going to be involved no matter what. So he's just that guy out there. And then Nico Collins actually led the team in snaps, targets, and routes run in his first game back for the Texans for in, from injury, and he went 5 for 49 in a touchdown. So it's pretty encouraging stuff to see from Nico Collins. Looks like the team is kind of looking to put him a little bit more forward than he has been. So it's really good to see. I not really expect anything huge from him because at the end of the day, it is still the Texans, but it is encouraging, yeah. at least from a fantasy perspective. Yeah, dynasty-wise, I think oh, he's yeah. definitely somebody... Uh, I'm sure he's been on everybody's radar if you're playing dynasty, but it's definitely encouraging to see this usage from him, uh, a guy that I thought was talented coming out of Michigan. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next one, the Chiefs versus the Jaguars. The Chiefs take this one at 27-17. to Patrick Mahomes should be the MVP, man. He's just playing out of his mind. He's clearly the best quarterback in the league. Um, that's all I got to say. Yeah. I mean, just to go through the breakdown, it's Patrick Mahomes, like you said, easily the best QB in the league, if you weren't already aware. Threw for 330 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco dominated carries for this backfield, going 16 for 82. Uh, McKinnon got a lot of work in the passing game. CEH, not even really out there. (laughs) He got four snaps and no touches. Yeah. You know, man, I talk a lot of shit about CEH. I've talked a lot of shit about CEH this year. It does hurt to see that he's not on the field at all. I will say that did... It did hurt a little bit, but if you're not performing, get the fuck out of there. And then yep. uh, Juju <laughs> took a pretty huge hit in this one. Now he's in concussion protocol, so hopefully he's okay. Someone that was emerging as the wide receiver one for this team. Uh, Travis Kelsey keeps on keeping on. Six catches, 81 yards in the touchdown, doing Travis Kelsey things is exactly what you'd expect out of the tight end one. And Kadarius Toney only got 28 snaps this game, but did a lot with that. Caught four passes, 57 yards in the touchdown. Ran twice for 33 yards. And one of those catches, bro, I, were you watching the game? Or you probably seen the highlight at least. But that Kadarius like, Tony catch where he readjusted his gloves. His gloves. <laughs> yeah. Doug, that was – That was wild. He's so good. Like, he really is yeah. really good. So, it's interesting to see, like, how this team is going to use him going forward and how they're going to acclimate him in. Because if he's doing this off of limited opportunity, I'd like to see yeah. what he could do with full opportunity out there. So, those Kadarius Tony toner – Kadarius Oni Toners. That's crazy. <laughs> Kadarius Tony Owners. If you yeah. have them on your team, look forward to, you know, some brighter days ahead. And it's just, it's, it might be really good. He might be really good. Yeah. Uh, going on to the Jacksonville side of the ball, ETN kind of got bottled up on this one. Uh, 11 carries for 45 on the ground, three for 28 through the air. So even though he wasn't having a great game, they still tried to keep him involved. So that is good to see. But yep. wasn't able to really do much. Tough game for him going against going against the Chiefs, sort of an underrated defense as well. Um, Christian Kirk absolutely balled out though. Nine catches, hundred five yards, two touchdowns. He's our pick of the year, as you guys know. So it's amazing to see him go out there and just yeah ball finally again. And then Evan Ingram returned the full usage after the back injury last week, and he had a pretty disappointing fantasy day, but he had a touchdown that was called back due to penalties. So could have been a bigger day, but you know it is what it is. But 
the one takeaway I have is it's good to see that Evan Ingram had a full day, a full workload, and Christian Kirk was out there on the field, and he was still able to have a good day. Like, they were both able to coexist. So, that is cool yep. to see. Yep, 100% agree with you there. That was pretty encouraging. Mm-hmm. Um, and don't feel bad about shitting on CEH, man. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, let's move on to the Steelers versus the Saints. Another ugly one. Uh, 20 to 10, the Steelers get the win. Neither offense really looked good, but uh, I will say the Steelers defense was much improved with TJ Watt back. Uh, and I think that's probably what put them over the top in this one. Yeah, it's just like you said, uh, this offense sort of struggled. Uh, hold on. Sorry, I put that backwards yeah. against the New Orleans defense. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, all good. This offense did struggle against the sort of improved New Orleans defense. They, yeah, they just kind of struggled. New Orleans defense is pretty good. And then Najee Harris went 20 for 99 on the ground. So, again, not efficient, but it's not really – I mean, it's not super inefficient either. It's We've fine. seen way worse games out of Najee Harris as well. So Yeah, he, he had one, like, pretty long carry, too, that, that boosted his efficiency numbers a bit. But, yeah. Yeah, it's just – it is what it is with the Najee Harris situation. And then Deontay Johnson has an NFL high of 81 targets without a touchdown this year. That's kind of nuts. He's also second yeah. in unrealized air yards this season with 445. I He's just out there. He's It's disappointing to see because he really is really good. We've seen it for years at this point. And it's just they can't really get him the ball. So it's just they can't get him the ball in the right situation. So it's, it hurts to see. And then moving over yep. to the New Orleans side of the ball, neither offense was good in this game. Alvin Kamara was held in check with eight uh, eight carries for 26 on the ground, three receptions for 19 through the air, so he wasn't doing much. Juwan Johnson was the only person to really shine through, caught the only touchdown of the day for the Saints, uh, caught five passes for 44 yards. It's just – it's hard to make any type of predictions with New Orleans, especially since now the sort of quarterback situation is up in the air. We don't really know yeah. who's going to be who anymore. It's yeah. There's nothing really to talk about. These are two really bad teams with some bad players that I'm with a lot of unrealized potential, and I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's tough to know what to do. Uh, it sucks for Deontay, especially his usage, and uh, just for somebody as talented as he is to be underperforming like this sucks. Um, and one note that I do want to make: we mentioned it in our last video, the uh, news and injuries video. If they do, if New Orleans does make a switch at quarterback from Andy Dalton to Jameis Winston, that could be pretty bad for Alvin Kamara. Uh, it could significantly reduce his targets. Um, and we saw earlier on in the season that that was not a recipe for fantasy success. Yeah, so dark days may be ahead for Alvin Kamara. <laughs> Potentially. Um, and then in a really surprising game, in my opinion, uh, the Colts somehow beat the Raiders. I know that the Raiders are bad. I know that they blow a lot of games. I know that Josh McDaniels is not a very good head coach, at least to this point. But the fact that they didn't find a way to beat Jeff Saturday, whose only coaching experience is high school, and he had a losing record, crazy to me, bro. Yeah, the Raiders are shit. So let's go ahead and get into this. (laughs) Uh, So staying on the Colts side of the ball, you know, high school football coach Jeff Saturday gave Matt Ryan the start in this one, which was – a big kick in the balls to Frank Reich to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fuck everything that that guy did. Matt Ryan, you're going to start again. And yeah, my the biggest takeaway from this is uh, Jonathan Taylor's usage. He went from he went 22 for 147 on the ground, which is really good. But with Naeem Hines gone on, he was second on the team for routes run. So he's getting very involved in the passing game. Saw a 91% route participation. And he was on the field for 100% of the team's long down and distance snaps as well. So and as well as all of the two-minute drills. So he's out yeah. there getting super meaningful looks and super meaningful touches at all times. So that's amazing to see. And Paris Campbell emerging as sort of one of Matt Ryan's favorite targets out here. I believe he and uh, he and Michael Pittman both finished with seven catches this game. Mm-hmm. However, Paris Campbell is the one who actually saw the touchdown. Seven catches, 76 yards. He was able to do way more with it and just show a lot more chemistry with Matt Ryan. So... Harris Campbell might be somebody who rising up the ranks of the wide receivers for fantasy purposes. And on the Las Vegas side of the ball, Josh Jacobs had a good but very inefficient fantasy day. Uh, 21 carries for 78 yards and a touchdown. Also six catches for 28 through the air. So he was very involved, super involved, but wasn't able to do a whole lot with it. Well, he scored a touchdown, but you know what I mean. Not (laughs) the usual Josh Jacobs 30-point games we've been getting this season. He just wasn't able to really get it done too much. Uh, Devontae Adams, though, 
still balling out there. Nine catches, 126 yards in the touchdown, doing his thing. And then Foster Moreau's usage finally turned into a little bit of production. Uh, three catches, 43 yards in the touchdown. Not going to say it's encouraging for Foster Moreau, but it's, it is encouraging for at least Darren Waller if, if he returns. Hopefully they do start to look to the tight end position a little bit more, but I'm not super encouraged either. I, I know what you're about to say, bro. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just I, – I have Darren Waller on a few teams. I have him in Dynasty. I've been waiting for him to come back. I, I just haven't seen the production from him since like week one of last year. Yes, this is encouraging to see that they're targeting the height the tight end so heavily, but like I don't know, man. Are we ever gonna see Darren Waller play like, you know, he's supposed to again? Say I saw someone say Darren Waller got nineteen targets in week one of twenty twenty one and retired. I was like, Damn. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, I do want to reiterate Jonathan Taylor's usage in this one. Fantastic. With Naheem Hines gone, it really is unlocking his passing game usage, and that's so great to see. Um, I'll take the L because I was telling everybody to sell Jonathan Taylor. I, w- I was worried about the ankle injury. I was worried about this team as a whole. I didn't think that that was a very good combo, um, but clearly I was wrong. And honestly, I'm happy to be wrong about this one. Uh, good to see Jonathan Taylor producing. Hell yeah. So we'll move on to the next matchup, the Cardinals versus the Rams. Cardinals edge out the win in this one, 27 to 17. Um, this was the battle of backup quarterbacks. Uh, we had Colt McCoy yeah. going up against what, John what's Wolford. his name? Wol- John Wolford. John Wolford. Um, yeah. <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins and Rondell Moore played well, but outside of that, it was it was a weird one. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's talk, let's talk about it a little bit. We got the let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. We got the Arizona side of the ball. DeAndre Hopkins and Rondell Moore, are pretty much this team right now, as you said. DeAndre Hopkins with a 40% target share. Rondell Moore with a 37% target share. Neither scored, yeah. but they both still had really good games. Still extremely involved, as you can see. James Conner getting, is getting all of the work in this backfield, and he's scoring touchdowns again, so big day from him. Going 21 carries for 69 yards. Nice. And two touchdowns. <laughs> uh, not the picture of efficiency, as we've said before. He's not going to be Never that. is. But yep. he was able to find the end zone twice. So, James Conner. He did something. And then Eno Benjamin got cut. No one saw that coming. I didn't. What the fuck? Yeah. Eric didn't. No. What the fuck? <laughs> it was wild. I don't know what they're doing. And uh, Zach Ertz suffered a season-ending knee injury in this game, uh, unfortunately. So, you know, prayers out to Zach Ertz and his recovery time and his, you know, just him coming back to the field, being out to play football again. Hope the best for you, dog. And then Trey McBride, the rookie tight end, didn't see much production, but he did fill Zach Ertz's role. So the usage looked good. So we're hoping maybe after a week of practice, he gets a little bit more acclimated, gets more used to working in that tight end one role. He might be able to be slotted right into that spot. Uh, I don't know if he is as good as Zach Ertz. I'm kind of optimistic, though, because he is he was a pretty good prospect coming in. So who knows? Yeah. Yep. And as for the Rams, bro, <laughs> I'm going to read you the note that Eric has here, and then I'm going to go on my little <laughs> tangent for a second. This whole team is garbage, and I don't want to talk about them. <laughs> and I 100% fucking agree. Is there any yeah. team that has underperformed more than the Rams? You got Cam Akers, who everyone thought he was going to be good. Hasn't done a fucking thing. Has barely even played. There's some games where I don't even want to play because I don't like my usage. And you fucking suck, dude. I'm sorry. You can't demand shit like that when you fucking blow. Darrell Henderson, not able to do shit when they're, the other running back that's competing for time for him is at home, bro. He's at home and you're still not getting shit done. You got fucking Ben Skoranek, who is literally just, oh, wait, I thought that was Cooper Cup. That is literally his role in this offense, is to distract defenses. You got Tyler Higby, career underperformer. You got fucking Allen Robinson, who we thought was going to be good this season because he finally got a competent quarterback, but apparently he just fucking sucks. Apparently. It's been Allen Robinson the whole time, guys. Fuck all the trade rumors. Fuck the franchise tags. Honestly, bro, I'm sorry, Matt Nagy. You were probably right. He fucking sucks. <laughs> this whole team sucks outside of Cooper Cup. Fuck all of them, honestly. I'm tired of the Rams. It's not a Super Bowl hangover. They got lucky, and they fucking suck. All right. My bad. <laughs> That's just... All right. <laughs> yeah, damn. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, we we gotta we gotta clip that. We're we're putting that on all the socials. <laughs> I love I love the rant. I love the passion. I wholeheartedly agree. It's been so upsetting to watch this Rams team. Um, 
I did put that note in there that I don't want to talk about them. The only thing that I want to mention, and we we covered in it covered it in detail in our news and injuries video. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But Cooper Cup went down with a significant high angle sprain in this one. We don't have a, a clear timeline yet, but it's looking like probably like three to six weeks. So something to keep an eye on. Yeah. <laughs> Got to recover from that. that was oh, good. oh, wait, wait, wait. One more real quick. Matt Stafford, you're not safe either. Fuck you too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we got it. We got it out of our systems. Yeah. Warranted. Let's move on to the next game. All right, we're good. We're good. All right. Uh, the Packers, surprisingly, get the dub over the Cowboys in this game. Uh, a really good one, 31 to 28. Uh, a lot of big fantasy performances to talk about from this game. So what do you got for us, Will? Hell yeah. We got Aaron Jones, who went out there and did Aaron Jones things again, finally. Uh, 24 carries, yep. 138 on the ground and a touchdown. Exactly what you want to see out of him. So that's awesome. Yep. And somebody went out there and made a name for himself. And that's uh, the second-round pick, Mr. Christian Watson. Uh, put himself on the map going four catches, 107 yards, and three touchdowns. It seemed almost like every time he touched the ball, it was going for a touchdown, which essentially is what yeah. it was. And this is just a pretty impressive turnaround for the Packers, who I kind of lost all hope for. I know a lot of people have. And we all kind of thought the Cowboys were, like, the best defense in the league going into this game. And the fact that the Packers were able to come out there and do that with very limited offensive weapons – I wasn't expecting it. Didn't have it on my bingo card. That's for sure. Yeah, agreed. And then going on to the Dallas side of the ball, Zeke didn't play, so it was the Tony Pollard show once again. And once again, went out there and showed the fuck out. 22 carries, 115 yards, and a touchdown. It's almost like he should be the starter, but we're not going to talk about Jerry Lamb. <laughs> and <laughs> we got C.D. Lamb, who saw 15 targets, 11 receptions, 150 yards, and two touchdowns. So... C.D. Lamb finally doing the things that people drafted him for that we thought they were going to use him for, and honestly, yep. super encouraging to see going forward. Uh, do you have any other takeaways from this one? Uh, not not a ton to add. Just that I'm I'm really impressed with C.D. Lamb. I was I was starting to question whether he was like a true alpha number one wide receiver, um, and it seems like you know he's proving that he is. So that's definitely good to see. Good for fantasy owners that have him. Um, and yeah, crazy turnaround for Green Bay. We'll see if they can keep it up. Um, I know that they have some people returning from injury, so hopefully they can keep that going. 100%. And then second to last game on the slate here, we got the 49ers versus the Chargers. Uh, not a very high scoring affair. The 49ers win this one 22-16. Uh, Eli Mitchell came back in this one, was actually pretty heavily involved. Mm -hmm. um, and the Chargers, man. The, the story of their season is just injuries, injuries, injuries. Oh, yeah. The hits keep on coming for the Chargers. We'll actually talk about that side first just a little bit because it will be quicker. Uh, the Chargers just – they keep getting hurt. There's just more offensive defensive line injuries as the season goes along. And Gerald Everett also left this game with a groin injury. He's considered day-to-day, -day, so we don't know if he's going to play this week. They're saying he should practice this week, but we got no idea. And soft in tissue injuries are never great. And the top fantasy performer from the Chargers was not Josh Palmer like a lot of people thought it would be. It was actually DeAndre Carter. Uh, he was the top fantasy performer going four catches for 64 yards and actually scoring a touchdown. So it's like you said. Outperformed Eckler too. Oh, outperformed everybody. Yeah, top fantasy performer yeah. for the entire team. So it's yeah. just – Chargers are hurting, man. They're hurting. Yeah. And <laughs> it's showing throughout the, just throughout all these games. And then moving over to San Francisco, the biggest story of the game is that Elijah Mitchell – out returned and he out carried Christian McCaffrey this game. Uh, he looked good and he was also more efficient than CMC was on the ground this game. Now, do I think that's going to continue going forward? Probably not, but it's something people have been talking about and it is at least worth, you know, the conversation. I believe Christian McCaffrey's uh, snap share was like 34% this game. Nothing, yeah. not amazing, but we'll see how it is going forward. And then Christian McCaffrey was able to score once and got stopped on the one-yard line earlier in the game, so his DA could have been a lot bigger even, could have scored more. And I think the biggest takeaway from this game is my guy, Mr. Brandon Ayuk, continues to lead the team in snaps, targets, and routes run. And this is with Debo Samuel coming back. This is with Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. This is with George Kittle out there. They're at full strength. Well, you know, minus, I guess, Trey Lance is at. Is he maybe <laughs> full strength for this team? Debatable. Debatable. Yeah. But Brandon I <laughs> continues to go out there and stunt, and it's sort of something I saw coming just because I thought he's a very talented wide receiver. He just didn't really yeah. get the opportunity last year because of off-the-field issues. And now that he's finally yeah. back into this offense, we're seeing that talent shine through again. So it's encouraging to see. 
for sure. Yeah, his his day could have been even bigger too. He had an absolutely phenomenal route where he just shook the corner and then dropped a touchdown pass in this one. Damn. Um, so that that sucked, but yeah, he he's super talented and is the wide receiver one for this team so far. Hopefully that continues. And I do want to mention, uh, I think um kyle shanahan came out and said that this is kind of what they hoped for with eli mitchell back is that they want to split the snaps between him and cmc pretty evenly um so that does limit cmc's upside a little bit just because his touches aren't going to be as high as we had saw like last week Mm -hmm. um but i'm not going to panic i'm not too worried he's still going to be efficient and get a lot of scoring opportunities yeah he's at the point in his career but i don't really think there's too much there's no real such thing as like a invaluable or a not valuable Christian McCaffrey touch. Cause he's always able yeah. to make something out of nothing at, at all points. Sure. So yeah. And then into our last matchup, we had the Monday night game where the commanders took down the previously undefeated Eagles, a 32 to 21. You love to see it, man. Finally, the commander's doing something right. Yeah. Washington has a weird trend of beating like undefeated teams. Yeah, took the Steelers down. Was yeah. that last year or two years uh, ago? Two years ago. Uh, it was either two or three years ago when they were 11-1 and one that year. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just, yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about it. Uh, for the Washington side of the ball, they were playing with the game plan. If they don't have the ball, they can't score because they absolutely dominated in time of possession. And they did it by handing the ball to Brian Robinson 26 times for 86 yards in the touchdown, which amazing to see. Uh, Antonio Gibson also getting involved with 14 carries for 44 yards. Actually scored the first touchdown of the game of the night for uh, Washington, so that was nice. Not the first of the game. The Eagles scored the first of the game. Uh, Terry McLaurin also had a great night. He looked amazing. Caught eight passes for 128 yards. Just looked like an alpha dog receiver out there doing everything Terry's you'd expect. A baller, bro. Terry's a yeah. beast. There's never been any doubt on Terry McLaurin whatsoever on this show. There's no Terry McLaurin yeah. hate. We love that guy. I, I mean, to be fair, I've doubted him a little bit from a fantasy perspective. Well, but that's as an just NFL more, wide receiver. That's more situation-based. But as yeah, him as a yeah, player, yeah, he's the guy. He's a dog. Yeah. And then on the Philly side of the ball, we got Jalen Hurts, who still put up a good fantasy football performance with two passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Uh, A.J. Brown looked like he hurt his ankle on the first catch of the game, and he came back in and played the rest of the game but didn't really catch another pass. But Devonta Smith and Dallas Goddard were the ones who both scored in this game, but weren't able to really ca- rack up a whole lot of yardage. So they were both involved, but not really able to make a ton happen. I know the last time they played, Devonta Smith went off against the Commanders, and that trend kind of continued a little bit because he was the leading receiver for this team in this game, yeah. but could have been due to extenuating circumstances with A.J. Brown's ankle. So can't really attribute that to, oh, Devonta Smith's the guy against the Commanders. It's just, you know, it is what it is. But just shows yeah. he is talented enough to step up if something was to happen to A.J. Brown. So encouraging for Devonta Smith owners, at least, a little bit. 100%. And I wonder, I want to hear if there's anybody out there with a really, really bad beat. I know Devonta Smith had a pretty good game going, for like 14.6 points because I had him in a couple of rosters. And then that last play of the game with the like lateral play that ended up in a touchdown for Washington. I wonder if anybody lost their matchup off of that. So if that happened to you, I am very sorry, but also send that in. I want to see it. Yeah, I would love to see that. That <laughs> would I not I'll go say it'd be kind of hilarious. I'm not going to lie, it'd be pretty yeah. funny. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you stuck with us all the way to the end, we very much appreciate it. Uh, if you gain anything from this video, please drop us a like. That helps us out a lot. Subscribe to the channel, do all that good YouTube stuff. Um, so you can see what we got coming out on this channel, uh, down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also check us out on all of our other socials. We're, we're out there on TikTok, uh, putting up a bunch of fun content over there. Anything that we don't have on here, uh, that you feel like you're missing, we probably have over on TikTok. So check that out. Um, on Twitter, we're both pretty active. I've been really st- trying to tweet more on Sundays, get people involved, live tweet the games and whatever. So that's been pretty fun. Um, so yeah, go check us out over there. Will, you got anything else to say before we get out of here? Yeah, make sure you guys uh, also check out our TikTok. We got some fun ideas going over there. Eric's over there cooking some stuff up, so we should have some really new fun ideas for you guys as well. We got a fun spin the wheel challenge that we do every single week that's just, it's absolutely a blast. So make sure you guys check us out on all of our socials. And yeah, if you made it this far in the video, we love you and we appreciate you for watching. I do have one more thing. What's that? I forgot to mention. We continue to give out free fantasy football advice. Mm-hmm. No no uh, paywall, none of that. Hit us up in the comments. Hit us up on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, wherever you want, and we'll answer all your questions for free. 
Uh, we've really appreciated and enjoyed all of the engagement that we've been getting recently. So we would love for more of that from the community. Hit us up and we'll be happy to help you all out. But that will wrap it up for us and we'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Peace.